Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Hot tomorrow, but air quality alert in effect for Thursday. Find out how hot things get after that for the weekend. Next. All right, Ben, but we begin with a search for a killer on Detroit's west side after more than a dozen shots are fired at a gas station. Thanks for being with us for the news at 11 here. A 60 year old man was killed. Someone very well known in his community. Let's bring in Jason Colthorpe here off the top tonight live at Detroit Police Headquarters with more on what we know about the shooting. Jason. Devin, this began as an argument. We're not sure if it spilled into the gas station and then back out, but witnesses say these two men were going at each other at the gas pumps and then moments later shots were fired. Around 530 Wednesday, according to two witnesses who would not go on camera, 60 year old Bernard Holmes was arguing with another man at the marathon. One witness saw the men chasing each other around the pumps while holding the gas nozzles. The other witness says the gunman started to drive off, but then circled back, got out and fired 10 to 20 rounds from what appeared to be an AK-47. We heard um, it sounded like it was um, fireworks and then one of the neighbors pulled up on the block and said Bernard just got shot at the gas station. Word quickly spread through this west side neighborhood where everybody knows everybody. Oh, man, I killed Bernard, man. I and everybody him. knew Bernard. Everybody loved him. That's why you see all these people here. Everybody loved Bernard. He did a lot around here. He did a lot around in this neighborhood, yeah. Bernard was wonderful. His brother told me the family moved around the corner in 1969 and Bernard never left. Even though he lives next to a burnt up abandoned house, his grass and yard is so nice. He kept trying to keep the block clean. He was a real good guy. He was known as an amazing bricklayer who was always ready to lend his pickup to someone that had some things to move. I'm very sad. I mean, he's like a loved one that we just lost. He's like, I mean, he's, he's my brother. He's like a brother to me. We lost another good guy. Yeah. Detroit police not putting out any description of the shooter or the, the getaway vehicle, which could be because they have good information and they don't want us putting anything out there to tip this guy off. Uh, but one of the witnesses at the scene said the man was wearing a black face covering and got away in an all black pickup truck. We're downtown tonight. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. Okay, Jason. All right, let's uh, check in with Ben now. And uh, we know the temperatures are heating up and now an air quality alert for tomorrow. Yeah, Kim, hard to believe uh, this is that time of year where we start getting these stagnant hot days. The air doesn't move and we start getting ozone forming near the ground. And that's what's leading to the air quality alert. This is for most of Southeast Michigan tomorrow. So especially if you have breathing problems, just take it easy if you're gonna be outside. The other things that we can do, Try to limit uh, your use of the car, and if you do, do it in the uh, early or late parts of the day, especially if you're going to be filling up. Otherwise, we will possibly be seeing these reissued as we get later into this stretch because we've got even more heat coming as we head towards the upcoming weekend. Tomorrow, though, we're going to 88, not quite 90 degrees, but don't worry. We'll get there plenty of times in the next seven days. We'll see how many nights we can still be sleeping with the windows open and when that humidity comes back. All that in just a few minutes. Again, Devin. All right, Ben. Governor Whitmer signing an executive order late tonight to extend protections for grocery store workers and at-risk residents. The executive order goes through July 15th, making it mandatory for all customers who can medically tolerate it to wear a mask or face covering at grocery stores and pharmacies. Earlier today, the governor announced plans for an outline that will allow schools across the state to reopen for in-person learning this fall. Our hope is to release an executive order and a robust document that we're calling Michigan's Return to School Roadmap on June 30th. That will provide details on what will be required and what will be recommended for our schools. Districts, students, staff, and families must be nimble, and we've got to be prepared to move backwards if there is evidence of community spread of the virus. While we hope soon to be in phase five and stay there until post-pandemic, We've got to be prepared for spikes that might occur over the next school year. The governor also revealed that data shows Michigan is currently only one of two states on track to contain the virus, along with New York.
Time is running out to complete the 2020 census. Our statewide census return rate has been good. City of Detroit, though, lagging behind, and it is going to cost Detroit dearly if it doesn't improve. Mar McDonald's live downtown tonight. Mar, COVID-19, of course, really has hampered the city's efforts on this. Devin, you know, the city of Detroit had more than 90 public census events scheduled that were supposed to start a sort of kick off in March and then go throughout the summer. Well, COVID hits, all those big public events have to, be, have to get canceled. So now they're trying to play catch up and have teams of census workers go door to door. A parade tonight through Southwest Detroit and not for anything typical. <laughs> Yep, a census parade to bring attention to the necessity to return your census in an area that has had poor returns. The parade raise, raises awareness in a critical neighborhood. Um, this parade went to um, many, many blocks across southwest Detroit to try to encourage a mostly Latino community that it's okay, that the census is safe. The breakdown of the numbers look like this. Per census return, Detroit estimates it gets $5,000 from the federal government for critical programs, for education, food assistance, and Medicaid in economically struggling areas that for many is a lifeline. Detroit's current census return rate is 47.2%. To give you some context, Warren's is 75.2 and Birmingham's is 74.0. Because COVID canceled all the group events, the city will have people going door to door with masks on to encourage people to fill it out. Detroit needs you. Detroit needs you to respond to the census. Programs that you use that really are saving lives right now, health care, education, meals, um, these programs depend on federal money, and that depends on you filling out your census form. Back here live, it is critical if you don't fill out that census, it's like leaving money on the table instead of putting it in the pocket of your community. We're live downtown tonight. Devin Kimberly, back to you. So critical. And Mara, I know you've also been looking into the best and worst response rates. Well, the good news is, Devin, that our state response rate is, is pretty up there, but we are no Minnesota. Minnesota has the best response rate in the country. They're over 70%. Hmm. The worst one, New Mexico, at just 50%. Yeah. Back to you. And this is such critical information, not just for our state, friend, and for our city, but for everyone. All right, Mara. Kim. A West Bloomfield homeowner in the hospital tonight after being wounded in a late night shootout with two men. It happened around one this morning in the driveway of a home on Chase Court. Police say the 30 year old homeowner was just getting home from work when he was confronted by two men. They exchanged 10 shots. A 37 year old was killed in the driveway. A 47 year old was also shot. He was taken into custody. Police are reviewing home surveillance video. So we have an analyst in house that's uh, been able to reach out to the residents. We've been able to obtain some of that video cam uh, camera footage. So we're taking a look at that. Police say the homeowner was shot three times, but is expected to recover. New at 11. A group of Detroit students had an idea. They weren't going to take no for an answer. It required commandeering a downtown street. They want to paint a street, we got a street, so let's get together. How this idea came to fruition in just a couple of days. We go sky high with Drone 4. Reveal the message coming up. All right, Tim, but first, a now fired Atlanta police officer charged with the murder of Rayshard Brooks. The new information now being released about what happened after the officer opened fire. We've got that next.